I don't know about you, but I'm a huge Doctor Who fan. Since his revival, the TV show has spurred on a number of games, but none of them really gave you the feel of what it was like to be there with Doctor Who in the episode. So, budding game designer Simon Cogan took matters into his own hands and developed Doctor Who The Solitary Story Game. You take on the role of the Doctor, a brilliant, traveling alien and the last of the Time Lords who explores time and space in his machine, the TARDIS. Now everything you need is available in PDF format, or you can take advantage of the wiki site they've set up that puts everything in one easy to use place. How does the game work? First, you have to create the basics for your version of the Doctor. Every character in the game has three main stats, brain, brawn, and bravery. Certain times throughout the game, you'll be asked to make a stat roll. To do this, you roll two dice. If the amount you rolled is less than your stat amount, then you are successful. Other times, you'll be asked to make an opposed stat roll. To do this, roll one die and add the amount to your stat, then roll another die and add the amount to your opponent's stat. Whomever stat is higher after the dice have been added is the winner. In either case, the higher your initial stat is, the better off you are. Characters also have a number of traits associated with them. Traits represent skill and knowledge the characters have. Certain times throughout the games, characters will be asked to make a skill roll, to run away from an enemy, for example. There's a lot of running in this game. You might be asked to make a running 9 roll. To do that, roll two dice and add your running stats to the roll. If the result is higher than 9, then you've successfully run away. The game also employs the use of luck. Initially, the doctor starts with four luck points. These can be used to re-roll a skill or stat check, but can only be used once per check, and both dice have to be re-rolled when you use them. At the end of an episode, you can also use luck points to increase your stats, ask a friend you've made in the game to become your companion and travel with you, or acquire new items. The PDF version of the rules book includes a wonderful sample blank character sheet that you might want to print off and use, or at least model your note-taking after. Once your doctor is complete, it's time to land the TARDIS somewhere. This is known as turn zero. Remember, you get 12 turns to finish the game or you fail. The game will have you roll some dice to decide where you land and if you have an encounter as you leave the TARDIS. From here on out, your turns are broken into two sections. First, the Doctor and his companions are going to make an action. Now, there are a number of different actions available to you throughout the game, and your options actually change as you progress through the game. When you first start out, are just starting at a location before you've had any significant plot events or before you know who the evil enemy is, you've got two options. First, you can relax. Now, this is only available in a holiday location. It's basically sightseeing. Or you can explore. You're looking around to see what you can discover. Once you finally have figured out who the enemy is in this episode, you have two different options. You can seek information, try to find out what's going on using your aware trait. Or you can investigate, trying to find out what's going on using either the bureaucrat, charisma, thief, history, or computer's traits. Finally, once you have discovered who the enemy is and their evil plot, you have four options available to you. Planning, an attempt to increase a skill or trait. Research, using computers, medicine, engineering, or science. Conflict, actively trying to stop the enemy's plan or gaining bonuses for that big final showdown and defeat the enemy. Now, truth be told, there are several options that are available to you throughout, but they're not very exciting, but I'll go through them very quickly. Um, you can move. You can either move to a specific location or if your parties have split up, you can join back together. You can seek help in order to heal wounds or to persuade people to to join your fight. You can rest in order to heal wounds. You can wait to see what the enemy will do next. You can escape if you've been caught and imprisoned. And you can rescue if one of your companions has been caught and imprisoned. After your action has been resolved, you'll then roll dice on the encounter matrix. Now this acts sort of like uh, the electronic story master. You're gonna roll two dice and then look at the matrix itself Depending on what turn you're on, it will tell you whether or not you have an encounter. Now, if you've earned an encounter, you're going to roll one die, and it will tell you what type of encounter you're going to have. If you have discovered who the enemy is you're and found out their goal, you're going to subtract one from that die roll. If you found out the enemy, know their goal, and you can oppose them, you're going to subtract two from that goal. Next, you're going to roll one last die and then look at the encounter matrix that's built into the location of where this episode is taking place. And it will tell you what, uh, what page to look at for um, what encounter you're going to have. It's either going to be a plot event that's going to move the plot along. It'll be a character event that'll introduce new characters. 
it'll be a location event that'll bring in new locations into play, or it's going to be an enemy event. Now, if it's an enemy event, you're gonna roll the die and find out who the enemy is. That enemy will always be the enemy. Every time you have an enemy event, you're just gonna to flip to that page in the enemy book and do whatever it says there. Now, the first time you look at an enemy, you're gonna notice that they have uh, a defeat modifier or what's called a DM. It's gonna be somewhere between uh, probably negative four and two or three. The lower the number is, the harder these enemies are to defeat. You're gonna take that defeat modifier when you find out who your enemy is and add it to yours. Now, the doctor starts out at a zero at the beginning of every adventure. You may have gained some through some experiences, but whatever it is, you're gonna add the defeat modifier to whatever your defeat modifier is currently. Now, every time that you are gonna have a plot event, after you find out who the enemy is, instead you're going to roll for a goal. You're gonna see a number of different goals listed on the enemy page. Once you find out what the goal is, it's gonna tell you three different things. It's gonna tell you A, what the enemy is after, B, it's gonna give you a goal number. Now that is the defeat modifier that you have to have before you can oppose and eventually defeat the enemy. And finally, it's gonna set up some sort of challenge for you to accomplish, and once you do, it's gonna give you some sort of reward that's gonna be a significant number of DM to help you getting to your goal DM. Now, throughout the game, some of your enemy events may cause you to have combat with the enemies. So, the way this is the way that works. Um, you're going to look at the number of people in your party, so you and any companions and allies that you have with you when the combat occurs, and the number of people that are um, attacking you. It may be one, it may be more. Uh, one person is always going to be matched up with another opponent on the combat side. Combat is done in rounds. Um, if there are more combatants on one side, so if you have more companions than they have enemies, or if the enemies outnumber you, groups of three, or up to three, are going to start to oppose one enemy apiece. And um, those extra people are going to lend to the fight dice rolls. Now to fight, you're going to roll one die and add that to your brawn. You're also going to then take into account if you have any wounds or if you have any people adding to your rolls from uh, having extra people on your side and use that as a modifier, negative or positive. Then you're going to roll one die and add that to the enemy that you're opposed with, brawn. Uh, whoever is highest has won that round of combat. Whoever is lowest is going to take a wound. What you'll do is take the highest number and subtract the lowest number. Whatever the difference is, you'll look at the wound chart in the combat area and it'll tell you what type of wound they have. The combat itself is going to continue until either you give up, or you flee, or uh, everybody is dead or unconscious. So it's going to go on to the bitter end, pretty much. Once your DM is equal to or exceeds the gold DM, you can then have an enemy event and oppose that enemy. If you succeed in your opposition, you have defeated the enemy! Woo! Uh, if you fail, then you can try again, and it usually gives you some sort of negative effect, like a negative DM, so you have to go back and earn some more before you can oppose again. Once you have completed the game, uh, then you can go on and use your luck points to um, do some of those things we talked about earlier. There's some great things in the uh, booklets themselves that tell you how to um, turn your games into like seasons. So you can have different episodes in your seasons and have a seasonal arc. It goes very complicated if you want to get that complicated, or you can just have a fun time. Not too complicated, right? Here's a quick playthrough to show you how it's done. Okay, here I am. I'm ready to play my solitary story game. I have my... Uh, character sheet all set up here. Um, I've decided that I'm going to, surprise, surprise, play with the fourth doctor. Um, and when we look at the book for the fourth doctor, uh, You may be a doctor, but I'm the doctor. As a definite article, you might say. Look here, doctor, you're not fit. Which I agree with that. I believe that he is the best doctor of them all. That's why I'm doing it. Um, when I look here, it tells me that uh, when I play with this doctor expansion, I'm going to start with Sarah Jane Smith as my companion. And um, I get to roll for starting equipment. So I did that. I'm starting with a sonic screwdriver, which gives me um, one extra brain when I'm against a machine person. And it gives me a plus to any, to any escape and rescue. Uh, and here's Sarah Jane with her traits and her stats and everything already set up, ready to go. Okay, um, so it tells me too that I'm going to uh, roll 1d6 at the start of my adventure to see where I'm going. 
So I am going here. Ah, or Earth orbit sixteen thousand. Da da da. Uh, so this is turn zero. So I'm going to go to my guy here and write down that I am on landed Earth orbit sixteen thousand. I see here some of the da -da -da -da, some of the music that goes along with that. I'm just going to pause that for now, um, and I'm going to go to my encounter matrix to see if I have an encounter the first moment that we get off. I do that by rolling the dice. I'm looking at turn zero, so if I roll an eight or more, I'm going to have an encounter. Five, six, seven, eight. I did. Look at that. Now I roll one die to see what that encounter is. So three. I got a character event. So I'm going to go back to here. Now I'm going to see what character I'm at. I ran across a scientist. You encounter a scientist. Roll 1d6 to determine his characteristics. If there's an enemy, add plus one to it. There's no enemy yet. So, a scientist with a manic gleam in his eye. Let's see. The crazed scientist. You've encountered a brilliant but unbalanced scientist devoted to his project. He has brains eight, brawn four, bravery eight. Roll one d6 minus two for the number of security guards with him, each with uh, these stats here. So one d6, so minus two. He doesn't have any security guards with him. Then choose the option below. Talk to him. Make a charisma roll. If there's an enemy here, add two to the roll. Nope. Um, two to six. I can all these things happen. I can evade, run. I might as well talk to him, right? So I'm going to make a charisma roll. So I've got no, I got both my people with me. The doctor has charisma and Sarah Jane has charisma. So I can roll two charismas there. So what I'm going to do is roll two die and add two to it. So I've got six, seven, eight, nine, because they're going to talk to him together. So I rolled a nine, which says here you are allowed to surrender, uh, but with a negative one to the roll. Otherwise, if he has a greater brawn, he will attack. So if I'm looking at surrender, roll one d6. Let's see. And I got a three. One to two are attacked if they have greater brawn. Nope. Uh, so I was allowed to surrender. And I was captured. If you're playing, it's one of the earlier incarnations of the Doctors. Uh, go to the relevant page. So I'm the fourth Doctor. You are arrested by overwhelming for forces you cannot resist. You are not for the first time in your life put into a cell. If your adventure is the Renaissance, it's not. Okay, roll one d6 for the gravity of the offense. Three. Enslaved. So we. Got off, and we're enslaved by this science, mad scientist. That's exciting. Uh, <laughs> you're put to work by your captors in some captivity. Uh, you've been enslaved by the... I have not been enslaved by the enemy. Uh, roll 2d6 each turn, adding plus one for each thief trade. Okay, so this was all turn one. So I met a mad scientist who enslaved us. Very sad. Alright, so the beginning of turn two. <laughs> Been enslaved. Uh, actually, this is the first turn. First official turn. So, at the beginning of each turn, roll 2d6. Adding plus one for each thief trade. I have one thief. So that's nine, ten. You managed to escape the enslavement. So we have escaped. Now I can actually do something. Um, <laughs> uh, so I'm going to explore. You decide to explore the area and see what we can discover. Let's see. Uh, roll 2d6 and add any for tracking. I don't have any tracking. So 2d6. Bam, 4. You become hope hopelessly lost. And I'm the fourth doctor. 
You're hopelessly lost. You may not complete any action until you find your way again. To do this, roll 2d6 each turn, adding plus one for each tracking. All right. Eight or more, you can resume with normal actions. All right, so I'm lost. Explore and become lost. Now I'm going to see if I have an event or an encounter. There we go. Um, turns one through four, I absolutely do. What is it? Five, it's another character. Let us hope that we don't meet another crazy scientist. All right, character. Four. I've met a technician who joins you as an ally. Roll 1d6 to find out who we've met. If on a spaceship or a space station, we're in orbit. Technically, what does that mean? I rolled a three. Let's remember that for a second. Um, future era. Mm, technically, we're on a space station, so I'm gonna I'm gonna say that we are. So I'm gonna say we're a four. A computer operator. So we've met. We have an ally, and I'm going to name him. Uh, Samuel, just for fun. He's a computer operator. And he is 556 five, with computers, marksman, and victim. 556 five, computers, marksman, and victim. Okay. It also says to make a brains roll for them, adding a wear bonus. If they succeed, they can roll for a plot event. That's exciting. So his brains is five. Um, he doesn't have any wear. So I've got to roll two dice and try to roll less than a five. If I do, then he gets a plot event. Nope. No plot event. Okay. So I can say, while I was lost, I ran into Samuel, the computer operator. Alright, let's see if I remain lost. Um, Alright. Go back to lost and figure out how to do that. Let's see. To do this, roll 2d6 each turn. 6, 7, 8. If 8 or more, then you can resume actions as normal. Okay, no longer lost. Maybe Samuel will help me. So, I'm going to continue to explore. Five. Oh, let's see, a companion in trouble. Your companion has wandered off and found trouble again, as usual. Make a random selection. You have two companions. Uh, independent companions must be chosen. Well, as we see here, I've got only Sarah Jane Smith as a technical companion, so she's the one that's going to be lost. Uh, let's see. I'm not alone. Or 1d6 for the companion ally. Let's see. 1d6. I rolled a 1. There's no enemy yet. Separated. Although one of the first rules of traveling in the TARDIS is don't wander off, companions rarely seem to listen. Your partner has become separated. Let's see if they're already separated. Let's roll a d6. Nope. Okay. Um, all right. So because we've become separated, not lost, explored, and Sarah Jane Smith becomes separated. All right, so now that means that Sarah Jane Smith is going to have uh, some stuff to do on her own. So let's see. Um, the doctor is going to have a possible encounter now. Let's see. He rolled a five. Nope. Sarah rolled a six. Nope. So neither of them had an encounter. No encounter. 
the boss and I found the enemy yet. But now I've got two different people wandering around, so I can explore twice. Aha, uh -huh, that's exciting. So I've got the Doctor and Samuel together. And the Doctor and Samuel have rolled an 11. They discover something important. Roll for a plot event. Ooh. Here we are. Event. Five. Medical kit. This handy kit contains antiseptic sprays, painkillers, and other drugs. Any character may use the kit to cure a character that has been wounded by making medicine six six roll. Awesome. So Doctor and Samuel explore and find a med kit. Which I'm going to add to my equipment. Med kit. And then I'm going to put that I can heal a wound by making a med six roll. Med six roll heals wound. It also says after each one roll one d6 and on six or more you've exhausted it. One d6 equals six. Discard. Okay, that's why we need this notepad because we're often making different notes and things like that. So we're going to see if they have an encounter before we look at Sarah Jane. And they absolutely do. And they have found a location. So this is probably where they found this med kit, I'm going to assume. So they wandered into. A laboratory! You've discovered a laboratory filled with useful equipment that may help you defeat the enemy. Let's see. Any characters with science or engineering gain plus one brains until the end of the adventure. Ah, if you choose to research as an action here, gain plus two to the die roll. That's exciting. Okay, science or engineering gain one brains to the end of the end. So he's got engineering, which actually should be one, sorry. Um, so he gets an extra brains. So I'm going to put plus one there, so I remember. Science engineering, science engineering, no, nope, we're good. Okay. All right. So now we're going to go back to explore, because Sarah Jane is exploring on her own. Here we are. Eight. You meet someone. Roll for a character event. Da da da. We got lots of people in this episode. Character event. She has met a research team. You discover a small group of two scientists, each with seven, four, and five, and computers, engineering, medicine, and science. Roll one d six for any additional group members. Uh, let's see. The team were led by another scientist. I'm return here for the encounter option. Okay, so I'm going to make a note of this uh, very quickly. So um, from now, I'm going to put them down here. Uh, research team of two scientists. So I'm going to say um, Janice and Frank. <laughs> research team. Research team. And they have the same stats. Seven, four, five. Seven, four, five. I won't write it twice because it'll be there. Computers, engineering, medicine, science. Computers, engineering, medicine, science. Okay, we're going to do that then. And they're led by another scientist. Oh no, are they led by the evil scientist? Let's see. Now this time they're led by a handsome young physician. Ooh, let's see, he joins as an ally making, oh, that's good. All right, so our handsome young physician shall be, uh, what's a good doctor name? 
uh, Hogan, sure, physician. Let's see, he's got 667, 667. And Charisma Marksman Medicine, wow. Charisma Marksman Medicine. Pilot Running Thief and Victim. Pilot Running Thief Victim. He's got a lot going on. Join us as an ally. Make a brains roll to gain a plot event. If you have a female companion with charisma, next time you have an event, see this. Okay. Okay. Um, so, make a brains roll. So I'm going to roll two brains. He rolled six, so he did. So I have a plot event. Um, Sarah Jane Smith has charisma, so my plot event is going to be this. A romantic interlude. Two characters from your group share a gentle time together. You may choose the characters. If there are more than two, we know which two. Uh, Hogan and Sarah Jane. If both characters have charisma, gain a luck point. Two, if you choose yourself as a character. Well, the doctor's not one. After the adventure is over, one of these characters is, is an ally that does not survive. Oh, after the adventure is over, if one of the other okay, is not does not survive, lose one luck point. Both characters survive. Okay. Stuff to go at the end, so I'll just remember this. Okay. So I get a luck point because they both have charisma. Charisma, charisma. That's, that's my luck at five. Alright. Let me write some of this down. <laughs> And a laboratory. All right, Sarah runs into research and research team led by Hogan, the physician, who she shares a romantic moment with. Alright, so I still do have to go back and continue on. Alright. Talk, make a Christmas roll. If there are soldiers with you, no. Okay. So hopefully uh, they're not going to attack me. Let's see. <laughs> He's already joined me, so it seems like this is kind of moot, but it says I have to do this. Alright. Maybe they're against me or something, who knows. Um, but I'm definitely going to talk to her. Uh, they have an interlude, so we're going to have them both talk. I'm going to make a charisma roll, which means I'm going to add two, because I've got Sarah and Hogan, who's now with me. Um, so that's five, six, seven. The team ignore you, and the events ends. All right. I'm playing Legends if you gain a plot event. Roll up on six. And, okay. All right, so the rest of the team ignores me, but she uh, and he kind of have a moment. So now let's see if there's an encounter that also happens after they meet. Four, no, no encounter. No encounter. The enemy just has not shown itself yet, but it probably has something to do with an evil scientist. So let's see, we're going to continue to explore. Um... Alrighty, let's see. Doctor's exploring. Two, you encounter the enemy. Let's see what the enemy is. The doctor finds out that we are facing... The Centaurans. Oh no, you've encountered the Centaurans. Okay, as we can see here, when we find the enemy for the first time, it tells us what their DM is. And this is a negative one. That means it's a fairly hard enemy. That means that when we start, uh, encounter them, we gain a negative, D, negative one DM, which we're going to have to make up before we can uh, get enough for the goal. We don't know what their goal is yet. Uh, but we do know that they are a militaristic and bloodthirsty clone species that exists only to engage in battle. Roll 1d6, and if you roll a 1, see that. Okay. I did. Let's see. Cl 
clone imposter. You've encountered what we actually encountered was the Centauran clone imposter minion. If you have any allies and companions, one of them randomly is really the imposter. Oh no. Well, the doctor is currently with uh, Samuel, who apparently is the clone imposter. That's awful! Okay, roll 1d6. Three or four. Negative one DM. Oh, gosh. That's just horrible. All right. So now I'm at a negative two DM. If the clone imposter has a greater brawn than you, using the character's original brawn, he will attack. Let's see. Samuel's brawn is five. The doctor's is six. So the doctor's is higher. You can escape. Blah, blah, blah. If you have a greater brawn, the clone slips away before you can stop it. The character the clone replaced is now captured. If you have no allies, which I do, okay. So, sadly, I have been walking around with uh, a clone version of Samuel, who is now captured. Um, but the clone slipped away, so let's write that in there. Doctor explores and discovers the Santarans are here. Samuel is actually a clone imposter of Samuel and he and slips away from him. Do we have an encounter? We're on turn four, so we're still here. We do. We have, we're still looking here. Um, we haven't revealed the goals. We're still looking at our normal numbers. So three, we have an event. So back here to find our event. Okay, so normally when we would have, now that we have uh, an enemy, normally we'd roll on an event here, but instead we're going to have a goal event because we've discovered what the enemy is. So let me go back to our enemies. Oops, I'm going to the wrong one. Let me go back to our enemies, uh, the Santarans, and we're going to discover what the goal is. Alien Invasion. So the goal four, that is the DM number that we have to get. Um, so I have to get six DM points, which is going to be really hard because I've got to get my negative two and then up to four. Invasion. You realize the enemy is planning invasion. Gain plus two DM if you have 25 brains. Three turns after this goal is revealed, gain a negative one DM penalty. Increase the number of enemies in the next enemy encounter by two and roll 1d6. All right, so let me knock this down. So this is the challenge the game has set up. If I can get 25 brains within my group, then I can have a plus two DM. So I'm just going to write that down here. 25 Oops, 25 brains equals plus 2 DM. Okay. Um, and I'm going to mark over here one, two, three turns from now. I get a negative 1 DM penalty. Negative 1 DM. I'll just write that down. Negative 1 DM. Increase the number of enemies in the next enemy encounter by two. Roll 1d6. Five. Red alert. You discover that the immediate area is on maximum alert for some reason. Everyone is suspicious and nervous. You may investigate next turn, add plus two to the number of troops you encounter, and apply a negative two to charisma rolls, but add any unit. Okay. If you choose any talk option, if you're captured by troops, no, there's a lot to remember. Okay. So just remember red alert stuff's going on. Um, but I can investigate next turn, which is really good. Okay. So let me just write this down here. Uh, he discovers that they are planning an alien invasion. And the area is on red alert. Meanwhile, Sarah Jane Smith 
Um, now that we've discovered all this about the goal, Sarah Jane Smith is going to be able to investigate, it says. So she's going to investigate. Do some investigating. All right. Uh, let's see. Tells me to roll 2d6 and get plus one for each aware. So Sarah Jane Smith does not have an aware. She is with Hogan, who also does not have an aware. Okay, so that's nine. You discover, no, you discover something, some important information. Roll for a plot event. Okay, I'm not rolling for any more plot events. I can't roll for any more. I would normally roll for a goal event. Instead of that, I get a uh, positive D1. She investigates and finds info. I'm going to write plus one DM. I'm also going to make this only a negative one now. So that's good news for us. Now, does she have an encounter? Let's see. No, she does not. Now, encounter. All right, so let's see. Let me look at who's with me. Remember, Samuel's been captured, so I can't really... If I get him back, I can count him. But I've got 13 brains here. She has six. That puts me at 19. Hogan is six, so that's 25. So I've already got it. I've got my 25 brains put all together. So I'm going to give myself... But, um... Plus two DM. Because I already have the goal. So that puts me at one. So I only need three to be able to oppose them. So I'm going to be doing things that um, will give me more DM. Uh, research could give me more DM. All right. So I'm going to research. And I'm going to research using... Uh, what I have more of. And so the doctor's now by himself. Um, you know what? What would be actually smart instead of researching? I'm going to have him move. I'm going to have him move to Sarah Jane. So I rolled 2d6, and I'm looking for an 8 or more. I got 5. So he didn't uh, find them. Doctor is looking for Sarah Jane Smith. Didn't find her, but uh, remember now we're on roll five and we have, um, we found the goal. So each one of these is reduced by one when we roll these dice. That'll, that'll make sense in a second. Uh, I rolled a seven, so I definitely do. So I roll this. Four increase, decreased by one is really a three. So we look at event two. But instead of an event two, I would get a positive DM. Okay. Uh, finds info on the way, we'll say. So he's got a two DM. Oh, we're getting close. Meanwhile, Sarah Jane Smith is will also move to try to get towards the doctor. She didn't either. Okay. Looks for doctor. What does she find on the way? She got a six, so yes. Five. She found another character. We're finding a lot of people in this, um, which, you know, sometimes happens in the story. You find lots of different characters. So let's see who we find. This time we found a crusty old medical doctor. Roll 1d6 and a roll 4 of 6. He joins as an ally. He does not. Make a brain rolls for him. Uh, he will stay and help any wounds if not an ally. So we ran into him, so that's good. We'll call him... Um, he's just a dude we know. He's a doctor. Finds a doctor but not the doctor. Yeah. Okay.
the doctor looks for Sarian Smith. We're back to moving. This time I get a plus one to it. Seven. Close. But no cigar just yet. Encounter rain tracks. Yes. Three. He gets another DM. Finds info on the way. Sarah's also going to look for him. Sometimes you just get separated. Uh, eight, one finds him. And finds him. He's already has his encounter, so she does not have one. Okay, here's the sad news. We've come to turn seven. My DM is now two instead of four. Durant. Okay, but now that they were all together, I can choose to uh, do something else. So I can research or I can plan, but I think research is more important. So, research. Um, and I'm researching using one of these traits. Uh, computers, engineering, history, medicine, or science. Oh, you know what? I, that's why I have put that engineering there, too, because the sonic screwdriver does that. So my engineering, I've got two. Um, he also has engineer. Uh, Janannis is not with me. Um, but Hogan is, and he doesn't have that. Uh, Samuel, we don't have really either. Okay. So engineering two. So I rolled a six. I'm going to add two to it. So that's seven, eight. And I look here, slow going, no result, but next time I get to add plus one. All right. So group researches with engineering plus one next time. Let's see if we have an encounter. We do not. We'll do that again. We're research. This time I got five, six, seven, eight, nine, plus one is ten. On ten, make progress. Gain one DM. Group researches plus one DM. Puts me back at three. One more and I can try to oppose. Uh, let's see if I have an encounter. Four? Nope. No encounter. We're getting close, though. If I get to 12, then the game ends. Group researches. Let's see. So I've got ugh, six, seven, eight again. Means I get a plus one next time. Plus. One next time. Roll to four. We're on turn nine. Uh, still no encounter. Group researches. Let's see. Oh, really? Five, six. 7, 8, which I think, again, is going to be plus 2 next time. Oh, let's see. Definitely an encounter. All right, I got a 2 minus 1 enemy event. So I'm meeting the Suntarans again. Let me pull them up. Oh, if only they had hold, held off for one more turn. Okay, let's see. <laughs> Roll 1d6, 2. Alright. So I'm looking at plus 2 if it's 9 or above. So I've rolled a 2, I've really rolled a 4. Uh, I've encountered 4 Centauran troops. So let me write that down. Okay. 
encounter four Sontaran Sontarans. Okay. Sontaran troops. Who have four, eight, and eight? Four, eight, and eight. Ooh, eight and eight and troop. Okay. If there are at least four, which there are, roll one D six. Alright, I rolled a one, so that's fine. There's no commander. Nope, 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 nope. Okay. So here's my options. I can fight, I can evade, I can hide, I can follow, I can try to talk to them, surrender. If I talk to them, if I convince them that you are stronger than they are, and that you can defeat them, make a brains roll. With your brains reduced by one for a commander. Nope, 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 nope. If you succeed, gain a plus one DM. Ah. All right, so this may give me what, exactly what I need, actually. So I'm going to make a brains roll, and who do I have here? I've got 13, and I'm going to, I'm going to win. 13, 6, makes me 19. Um, I've got Hogan, gives me 25, which is my 25. Uh, and they're only like 4. So even with the doctor by himself, uh, it wants me to just make a brains roll with your brains produced by one for commander. So I just make a brains roll. Um, so yeah, any way you look at it, I talked to them and I got plus one DM. And convince them we are stronger than them. Plus one DM. That gives me the four I need to try to oppose them. Da -da -da -da. So what I'm going to do is uh, just wait. When you wait, uh, you're just waiting for the enemy to make the next move. Do not roll on the table below, but roll for an encounter, adding plus one to the d6 roll. So now I'm going to... Hopefully wait and find, and I can definitely have that. I roll this, subtract two, I still get an enemy event. So now I've met the Suntarans. All right. Uh, four plus two, I've met six of them, so I get six Suntarans. Find six Suntarans. If there are at least four, roll that. There's also a Suntarn commander. If there are five, there's also a general. Okay, which are those stats there. So I've got a commander and a general and uh, all those Suntarns. What I want to do uh, is oppose them. So... If you can oppose, you may have gloating into your brain's role. If the commander is under. If there is a commander or general here, then the Suntarans are instead defeated. If you fail the role, the Suntarans advance toward you with their weapons raised. Choose to fight. Okay, so what I need to do is talk to them again. And if I succeed, then I have opposed them. So I make a brain's roll. Uh, and it's less than what my brains are which is fantastic, which means I've opposed and won. Hurrah! So that is how that game is played. Now I know the developer Simon is very, very interested in hearing all of your comments and feedback about the game over at Board Game Geek. Uh, he also enjoys reading through some of your playthroughs and fan fictions and things like that inspired by those playthroughs. So please feel free to do that as well.